speaking today is Jolie Eason. I sent her an email asking her if she knew my cousin. Now, what's the chance this girl from Georgia knowing my cousin here in Virginia? But you know, she never asked. I don't know if she knows him or not. <laughs> Maybe she doesn't want to know. Him. If you read the write-up, if you got on the back of your when you see here, this girl has done so many things to help people that are not doing well, physically. She's from Georgia. Her father, I don't put that, I don't put that, her father was a minister, so she knows she comes with the right heart. The right the heart. heart. So I'll give it to you. Yeah, she's got Thank you, Russell. I do not know Percy Eason, your cousin. No. No. Um, work this. Is that my first work? I don't see why it's going on. Okay. Okay. You got it? Okay. Is that all right? Can everybody hear me at that? No. 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 Can't hear me. Okay. How's that? Is that any better? I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to turn it off. Okay. Is that better? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It has an echo to it, doesn't it? Yeah. That's your accent. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is that better? Yeah. 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 Take a look at them 
and see if they're still accurate, if they still say what you want them to say, especially your will. Do you, if you have powers of attorney and medical directness, do you have people named as agents that are still able and willing to help? Um, if you don't have those documents, I would strongly recommend you see an attorney to get those prepared. Um, they help out families. Uh, whenever family members need help with health care decisions, someone's in a hospital and they don't know one has authority to help make health care decisions for them or go to their bank and deal with their financial affairs. Um, and then once you have all your documents in place, get them organized, put them in a safe place, let somebody know where they are, and then you're done, you can move on to the, whatever next is on your to-do list. So the documents we're going to talk about today are the last will and testament, talk briefly about probate, just a couple of things, talk about trust and when it's good to use trust, powers of attorney, and medical directives. And if y'all have any questions along the way, feel free to raise your hand. I'd like for this to be interactive so you don't have to hold your questions till the end. Um, I don't want you to forget it or whatever. You're welcome to, to just raise your hand and ask. So some terminology, when you have a will, uh, some people pass away with a will, and some people pass away without a will. For individuals that die without a will, they're called intestate under Virginia law. And whoever inherits from their estate is called an heir. Whenever you pass away with a will, you're called testate under Virginia law, and whoever inherits is called a beneficiary. Uh, if you've heard the term executor, that's the personal representative of a person's estate when that person had a will. An administrator is when the person did not have a will. Uh, it is also administrator if the person who was named an executor did not um, qualify, either they had passed away or didn't want to do it, then an administrator would qualify. Um, we often use the term stale will to describe wills that people did. 20 years ago, or 40 years ago, when they had young kids, they may have wanted to say who they wanted to be the custodian of those children, and it's maybe no longer relevant to their situation today. So, wills do not expire. If you have a will that's 60 years old, it's not invalid. Um, it just, it may not have to really reflect how you want your estate to go in your current situation. Yes? We moved from Florida to Virginia. We have all the paperwork down there. Right. Still good up here. It's still valid here. That's right. Yeah, if you move and you have your documents in Virginia or another state and you move, they're still valid. So you don't have to get them redone. Uh, it may be, I mean, it may be useful if they were older, but if they're recent, you probably it's probably just fine. Um, so I was with someone the other day, and they were like, "Well, I don't know that I have an estate. What's an estate?" And I said, "Well, if all you have is this old hoop that you sit in the yard, that's your estate." Like my parents have goats, and if, if all they have when they pass away were three goats, that's their estate. So it doesn't, you don't have to have, you know, a lot of money or a lot of assets to have an estate. Whatever you own when you pass away, that's what your estate is. Okay? Uh, it's just kind of, sometimes people think it's fancier than it is. Um, so what happens in Virginia if you pass away without a will? So a lot of times I'll have people that say, oh, I don't the state's going to get on my property. Well, that does not happen in Virginia. Um, in Virginia, the law spells out who will take your property, who will inherit your property, if you pass away without a will. So if you are married and you have children, but all those children are of that marriage, your spouse gets everything. If it's like a second marriage and you have children from a prior marriage, your spouse gets a third, and your children divide two-thirds. If you don't have a spouse, then your children take everything, equal shares, and then so on and so forth. Your parents, your siblings, and it goes on. And under Virginia law, there's a statute called the Laughing Heir Statute, which says if your closest relative is your 16th cousin twice removed, they can inherit your property and they can laugh all the way to the bank because they didn't even know you and they're inheriting your estate. Some states have cut it off to say no, it has to be within this, you know, you have to be this closely related, Virginia is not. So the state does not take someone's property in Virginia if you don't have any immediate family and you pass away without a will. So that's what happens if you die in test state, you didn't have a will. 
Um, what are the advantages to having a will? One, you get to say who gets what. If you don't want it to go that way, um, you can spell out, well, I may want it to go to my husband, but if my husband does not survive me, I want to go this way. And you can, um, you know, really put a lot of detail in about how you want your assets to go. And you can say, I want my real estate to go to this person. I want my financial accounts to go to this person. You can also, in your will, what's, what I have found to be very important is you can provide, you can, we put a clause in our wills that say, if any beneficiary under my will is on public benefits, such as Medicaid or SSI, and, and it, if they inherited my property, it would kick them off their benefits, that money can go into trust for them. So it protects your beneficiary's public benefit eligibility. And a lot of the work I do is fixing problems for people who inherited things and they got kicked off and then have to fix it because they didn't, the person who left them something um, you know, didn't have this in their will or didn't have a will. And so the, person, the beneficiary got money outright and kicked them off. Also, if you have grandchildren, you might say, well, I want my spouse to get my house um, or all my money, but if my spouse isn't living, to my kids. But then if my kids aren't living, to my grandkids in trust because they're young. Or you may have a kid who's a child who's 30, but maybe isn't really responsible with money, you can just put it in trust for them. So all, those are all things you can spell out in your will. So when should you review your, your document? I would say at least every five years, take a look at your will, make sure it's you know still suits and it says what you want. Um, also, if you have major life events like a divorce, remarriage, a child has predeceased you, um, if you uh, have someone in your family becomes disabled and becomes uh, enrolled in Medicaid, uh, I have a couple whose wife is in a nursing home and is on Medicaid, so we had to change his will. Because if, it, if we left it alone, his wife would get everything when he passed away and it would kick her off Medicaid. So we always, I always redo the spouse's will whenever I get one spouse on Medicaid. Um, so these are times when you, you should at least review and make sure they say what you want to say. A divorce does void any, um, anything you leave to that spouse under your will. So you don't have to redo it. Um, you know, under law, it voids any um, bequest you've left to your poor spouse. So this is the main the clause I put in my wills that um, helps a lot of people and get, it helps me sleep at night because I know I'm doing what's best for my clients and their families. Um, I have a lady last year who inherited a lot of money from her mom and she was disabled. She was on Medicaid at the time and got money from her mother's estate and so we had to go through this whole guardianship process and put it in trust because the lawyer who did the will before didn't have this one clause in there. If he had just put that clause in there, we wouldn't have had to go through all that expense and trouble. So in your will, um, you're going to do the same. If you have a will and you don't have it, can you just write it in? You can make a holographic will. I mean, is that clause? No. Um, you have to redo the will, or at least add a copy. 